Building a solid state FET vibrator to replace mechanical vibrator in car radio. Let's first take a look at the schematic. I want to take a minute and clarify a few things that were in the previous video. First of all, this vibrator is for both for 12 and 6 volt radios. It can be used for either and you change the Zener diodes here uh, for either 12 or 6 volts. Now this right here, if secondary voltage is too high, insert, insert 1, 2, or two, 2 to 3 diodes here to drop primary voltage. Now we found out this didn't work later in the video because it disrupts the gate drive on the FETs. So what I ended up doing is you have your transformer like this, right? Your, your vibrator transformer. Basically you have two windings, right? And then this comes up and connects. And this right here is your plus six volts. What I ended up doing or found that worked was in order to get the proper B plus was to put diodes here and each diode drops half a volt say so I inserted the diodes here and this circuit ran cool I tried initially with the diodes here which is what the instructions say and it didn't work the FETs got hot also the radio is 6 volts. It is a 6 volt radio that we're working on and it is going in a truck that has already been converted to 12 volts. What we're going to use is we're going to use this voltage dropping resistor drops 12 volts to 6 volts and this is specifically for car radios. talks about here this this mounts on the firewall probably because it produces an immense amount of heat and this is what it is it's just a massive ceramic resistor so you have 12 volts here and you have your radio there which is 6 volts And I bet this thing gets hot. I bet it's basically just like uh, nichrome wire coils. But we decided it would be best to go with this, then modify the radio with 12 volt filament tubes, and then try and deal with dropping the voltage here to still get the 220 volts B plus. So, yes, it is a 6-volt radio. Yes, it is a 12-volt truck. This is how we're correcting for that. And I found that this did not work, and I had to put my diodes here. It's been a long time since I built something like this. This is our solid-state vibrator replacement, and I'm really dying to see how this works. Got two fats. We got a 4047, and I should probably show this schematic because I hate it when you have things that don't have a schematic, but I'll have to figure out how to go through that. Off pin 10 and 11, you have two 220 ohm resistors that go to the gates. Then you have two Zener diodes to ground. And the Zener diodes are 6.2 volts or 12 volts. You have your timing thing. I think that's 0.1. I hope that's not 1. This schematic here is even a better option. It uses a 3525 chip, which is a pulse width modulation. I think they use this chip in a lot of uh, car stereo amp power supplies, switching mode power supplies. And this gives you the ability to adjust the pulse width and thereby the output voltage. So 
This one does 80 to 220 hertz, and you can adjust the duty cycle here. And th this would be ideal, but the only problem is this chip right here won't do 6 volts. I think this chip requires a minimum of 9 volts or something like that. But yes, I am familiar with this chip. This would be a better option for a 12 volt radio or a 12 volt conversion because then you could use this and just crank the PWM down lower to get your uh, your proper output voltage. Just really reduce it down to whatever, 30 or 40 percent. We should try this in a future video. I got one. We could change all the tubes to uh, 12 volt tubes, 12 volt filament tubes, and then go with a PWM. In fact, you could probably uh, set this up as feedback so it would be self-regulating. So thanks to everybody who took the time to email me different schematics and stuff. Good info. All right, I'm getting this laid out and I know it's not the best. And these are counterfeit FETs. These are IRF 46, I think. But we're just, this is all experimentation right here. And I got, I got a few of the components on the bottom. Yeah, it's not beautiful, but you know what? We're just doing some testing. Is this circuit going to work? The little solid state vibrator device is up and running here. And I just got it running on 6 volts. And it's feeding into two 6 volt windings on this television power transformer that I just had lying around. And we're getting... 89 volts AC backwards out of the power plug and the little fats there with no heat sink are not even getting slightly warm and it's running I believe let me see can I put 110 volts into this thing on Hertz let's see it's right it's running right about on 100 Hertz right on 102 hertz so that should be about perfect and it's super stable actually so uh, we'll have to hook it up to the vibrator transformer I, I wish i was getting more like a hundred and hundred volts out of the the thing the hundred volts out of this but you have to use two windings if you only use one winding the fats start to get hot so um, it, it looks very promising. I'm happy to report this vibrator circuit works very well. Uh, I'm going to hook it up here and I'll make a second more comprehensive video on this. So that's 6 volts. And it's a little bit too hot so we're going to have to add some resistor, uh, some diodes. It talks about adding diodes here to lower the secondary voltage you know. 9.30, I'm Mike Simpson and I'm Vicki Moore, well we're getting there a little bit of a storm, let's get the late on how much longer it's going to be with us when we get the break from our weather channel meteorologist Scott Lymore Thank you, Vicki. Encouraged by what we're seeing here, the cold front responsible for all our big weather today is making good progress through Southern California and my antenna fell off this cold front's going to come through before 3 o'clock. Early afternoon, we'll see an end to the rain. And then I think by mid and late afternoon, believe it or not, could even see a little sunshine break through before the day is done. We'll definitely see the sunshine back tomorrow, the weekend. So the humming is because of my location. It's not that thing. Plus, that thing is not even shielded like it needs to be. It appears that that thing is pretty quiet. Oh, and these are, I used, these are counterfeit IRFZ46. They don't even get warm. Continuing on with part two of our 1948 Dodge truck auto radio uh, solid state vibrator conversion. I, I moved inside and set myself up a little bench. 
because of the weather's been kind of rough and I'm using a little bit different lighting. I'm using a couple 1960s, uh, what are these, like uh, cool white uh, fluorescent fixtures. So I, I'm really curious to see how this looks because I, I really like working outside in natural light, natural air, natural ventilation. But uh, sometimes when the rain comes, you need to make exceptions. And I need to get this project completed because he's restoring this. In fact, he's already restored. Uh, he, he bead blasted the top and bottom cover and primed them. And I think he might paint it. I don't know. But he's doing a really nice job restoring it. So I want to get the guts solid and working so the first thing before I build another solid state vibrator because I, I made kind of a demo here and we'll go over this stuff in the video this circuit seems to work excellent so uh, first thing I'm going to do is pull this out and I'm going to recap it. There's three or four caps underneath this thing. I'm going to put, I'm going to delete this to give us the space. I'm going to put the diodes on the bottom of the socket and I'm going to pull wires up through these pins and the, the females are, I'm going to pull wires up through there so that I can connect our circuit board. And I'm not doing any permanent modifications that won't be able to be undone if and when we actually go back to vibrators instead of modern solid state car radios. So, uh, let me figure out, it only looks like there's two wires coming out of this thing. Let me figure out how to get this off. Probably just gonna clip these. And then there's, like I said, there's capacitors inside here. Well, here you go. This is what's inside. This is why I don't like working on stuff in the house. So we got a point, couple point fives here. I don't know what this one is. Or is that an inductor? This one right here. Because we should have two point fives, which I got point four sevens that filter, yeah, with an inductor in between them. So yeah, what's inside here is 2.5s with the coil. So these must be the 2.5s, that's a coil. And then this one here, 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 is a .004, which I don't even know technically if we need that or the resistor anymore going to a FET-driven solid state thing but I'm going to just put them in there because I don't know and it's working well right now so these these just filter you know these are RFI filters which are probably pretty important but yeah I'll have to I'll have to figure this out how it's got these cardboard caps doing some testing these are both very leaky in fact at 50 volts they close that hold the eye closed and they're way off value. They're measuring more like one microfarad and the eye barely opens. Um, not that they would show any leakage at 6 volts because that's what these are connected. But I tried these. I got these and uh, they, they're they dead on. They're perfect. So outside foil. I don't think I'm going to take the time to do the outside foil. After all, this thing is sealed in a solid metal enclosure. I don't think we really care about outside foil. This one's the vibrator point capacitor. This is the one that keeps the mechanical vibrator from burning up. And uh, it's gone up in value and it's very lossy. You can see the eye barely opens. So I need to get that one out of there anyway because if it shorts it'll take out the solid state thing. It'll basically just be a dead short across the secondary. So unfortunately I didn't get any 1500 volt capacitors. I don't know if I really need that, but maybe if I put two point zero ones in series, that would give me point zero zero five. 
I got this recapped. Like I said, this thing in the middle is an inductor. It's a coil that's between these two capacitors. So now I'm just working on uh, this capacitor here. So what I'm going to do is to verify my incompetence is put this in here, 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 here. And we'll cut that off. We get that much of an eye opening and this is supposed to be 004. And I'm sure someone will tell me, you don't even need that with the solid state thingy, whatever, but you know what, I'm gonna put it because I don't know. So it's measuring right now about point, it should be down here and it's measuring about what, point six, point seven. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try two, these are ceramic disc capacitors and they are 0 0.01 at two kilovolts. Focus, 103 at 2 kV. Put these in series and we'll try them here. So, take that out, put these in series, like this, right? And then we'll come down It's about right on, isn't it? Look at how nice that eye opening is. So that's what we'll do. We'll put those two of those in there. Here are the two diodes, the one in 4007s, and there are the two capacitors. Yeah, this wasn't quite ideal, but I, I'm not sure what to do with this. So there it is. I guess the vibrator would no longer fit, would it? Thing is recapped, put back in the can. Uh, I have four wires coming up here for our solid state vibrator, which uh, I guess I'm going to build another one right now because the first one was kind of rough and I got some non, non counterfeit FETs. The FETs I were using were the cheap eBay. Chinese counterfeit ones and yeah, they'll work for a while, but then one day they just explode This is the completed Kind of promo solid-state vibrator Prototype my my first run which my second won't be much better because I'm going to copy this and and these are the parts so These are the counterfeit fets that I was talking about you could get these off eBay real cheap these were uh, IRF Z46N. These right here are a 200, 270 amp. So I'm going to use those for the car radio I'm going to restore. Uh, I'm going to use these for this run. These are not counterfeit. These have really come down in price. They used to be so expensive. And this is a IRF 3205. And I think these were 90 amp. So, it's interesting. These are rated so much current, you, you would think they'd burn the electrical system up in the car. But they don't. When they go bad, they explode into fire. So I'm going to start assembling this, and I'm pretty much just going to copy. Uh, when I did this, I did I did the board in half. I intentionally did that. So I'm going to just sort of copy this same thing. Um, the schematic, I don't have the paper copy. I just have the uh, one in the phone. So I'll get to building. How do you build this? Well, you just have to figure it out. You just have to look at your board. And on this, it's not real intuitive how it is. Like, these these are connected. These rails are connected this way and this way. And then these five are connected. Five, five, five. 
And then unfortunately, instead of these rails being connected this way also, that's just two, 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 two. And I told the guy that designed this board, dude, create one solid bus at the top, one solid bus in the middle, and one solid bus at the bottom. Because your IC goes in the middle, so you got a ground bus in the middle, either positive or ground, however you want to do it, right? So... But yeah, I mean, I'm not using a positive and negative rail either, so maybe I shouldn't talk. This was my original right here. And I had bodged components on the, a couple bodged components on the bottom. I got those on the top on this revision. Got them up here. Um, I added two diodes. It should drop about 1.2 volts in the ground. And the reason for that is because my B plus was way too high. So we have our two FETs here. And this isn't the same schematic, but it, it said to add a couple diodes here to drop voltage to the source. So what that'll do is that'll lo hopefully lower the, the B plus in the radio because it was way too high. It was almost 300 and it should be 220. So I'm going to try two diodes, which should drop about uh, uh, 1.2 volts, maybe more. I don't know because it's going to be like a pulse. So yeah, uh, this revision is a little bit better, but still I'm trying to build it on a very, very small, in a very small, um, and I guess what I could do is I could bend these, trying to keep it very small so it'll fit in the radio. But well, I guess I should double check and we'll see if it works. And then if it works, we'll try installing it. I had to take a break because the rain was starting to flood everything. But I'm doing some checks now. I got 6 volts on it. I'm measuring the AC on the gate of the FAT. And I got 2.95 volts there. So that probably is good. I'm going to assume that the thing is working right. What I might do is grab a transformer like I did that one in the previous video and we'll we'll just listen and see if it's buzzing at about the right frequency. I don't have my frequency counter here right now. It should be right around 100 hertz. So yeah, I can hear the transformer buzzing. I don't think you'll be able to on the camera. But it sounds like about the right frequency. These don't run at 60 hertz. I originally thought that. They run about 100. Which, you know, is in the window of efficiency. So now to put it in the radio. And try and adjust the diodes to get the right B plus for the tubes at around 6 volts. So I'm inclined to believe that, hey, look at that. There's a yoke plug on it. <laughs> so is, is uh, watching B. Anderson TV while working on this, like listening to music while you're composing? I don't know. Anyway, new old stock Philco. Nice score there. I got this soldered in. Um, I guess we just test it. I'm, I'm a little bit unsure of how to mount it uh, I have to figure that part out I'm not really good at the fit and finish part of this stuff and I don't have a problem admitting that I think what I'll do is I'll power it up on three volts to start um, yeah the reason why we have to drop the try and drop the voltage is because with the solid state the FETs are really efficient, and the solid-state rectifiers really are much more efficient. Well, it is not working. So what did I screw up? This is a problem when you do so much, uh, so much modification to a radio, you don't know where you screwed up. Weird, so it does not like those diodes that I put in there. And, and the instruction said, if you had high B+, plus to put diodes in. It's very odd. Uh, I'm pretty sure I put them in right because they were working with the other transformer when we tested it. 
So, um, yeah, if, I mean, if I bypass those diodes, our B plus starts going right up. Let me try bypassing. Now I am using these little small clip leads intentionally to limit my current. With the full 6 volts and one diode bypassed, I get 108 volts. I'm pretty sure I put those diodes in there correctly. Maybe I'll try, I got these shot keys. Maybe I'll try one of these shot key diodes. A lot of experimentation, that's why we're testing. So I got one diode and I got 250 volts. Listen to this thing if I bypass this diode. So why does it not like two diodes? What if I put one diode and one shot key? I'd like to get that around 200. Here's the interesting thing. With the diode out of there, the fats don't even get hot. They stay cold. With the diode there, they get warm. It must be shaping the signal somehow. Uh, we're at 260 volts right now, which I think that's probably acceptable because that capacitor is a 350 volt and I was going to replace it with 400 volts. So we run a little bit hot on the B+. Plus. I don't think that'll really hurt anything. But the fats are getting slightly, well, they're getting warm with the diode. I mean, it's tolerable. I wonder what happens if we go up to 9 volts. Uh, well, it's screaming, baby. 385 volts B+. Plus. What, I, what I've come up with, and I, I don't know, it almost feels like the chip is getting hot, but the whole board is kind of acting like a heat sink. I put two diodes in parallel because one of them was just getting too hot. Now, now everything's just getting warm to the touch. It's like I touch it and I can hang on to it indefinitely, but it's hot. You know, it's, it's, and I'm, I'm on those batteries right there, which should be probably about six volts by the time you get through all the lossy cable. So the, the vehicle's going to have to have some kind of resistor. I guess we should hook a speaker and an antenna up to it and listen and see if there's any RF noise. Yes, sure, and it sounds amazing. I mean, you've got see to their needs. Yeah, I think when the can is on there, it'll totally shut it up. And this is only a 12 inch clip lead for an antenna. ERC experts will run the numbers. By the way, the the uh, this is a test. This is only a test. Thing is gone. One of those in the store with a handful of fresh pressed juices. And I'm, I'm passing the risk off. What did she want to go? The risk off on what? Once a year. And then, I mean, 
Do you breathe in chemicals once or twice a year or every day? Every day. Do you eat foods that have pesticides or herbicides and contaminants once or twice a year or every day? Every day. Every day, right? So cleansing and detoxifying. Well, of course. Why wouldn't you? I mean, if you're going to eat pesticides, you want to do it every day. Why would you want to do it intermittently? I mean, if you're going to get on a regimen of pesticides and toxic chemicals, you're going to do it every day. This is a supplement. It's and I've talked about the health benefits of beer. I've always been convinced it's a health drink. I mean, there's there's water in it. Uh, people should should stay hydrated, drink more water, stay thirsty, my friends. Right? It is be, it is barley. Yeah, but alcohol is a freaking diuretic, and it's not good right, for you. Important. There are hops. Yeah, I, I used to think that the more beer I drank, I might be able to dunk eventually. Yeah. yeah, there are also people that believe in believe radon and asbestos have health benefits too. So. Really, really, really... And smoking, because more doctors smoke camels. Article that he found. By the way, you can send me an article, too, if you, if you find an... Not to mention the other thing right now that people believe, some people believe, have health benefits, while others are dropping on live TV. The email address is... Nuestras diferentes opciones incluye... The 91 westbound at Green River. All the way across the... Into the ditch... Uh, the emergency equipment is there to fish him back up and out. He stayed right side up, which is always good news. Bye. Well, uh, my summary of this is... I'm not quite sure. I think it's a clean circuit. I think it works. I don't know how it's going to last. Uh, I don't really like the diodes to lower the voltage. I, I would like... If I had the vacuum tube rectifier, I think it would probably do a better job of lowering the voltage. But in part one, we discovered the vacuum tube rectifier, the 0C Z4 is garbage. So we went with solid state diodes, which are much more efficient. But, uh, I mean, the circuit works. So what can I say about it? You know, it's just the B plus is a little bit too hot for me. Uh, but as long as, you know, I mean, the tubes are warm, but they're, nothing's like smoking, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. Uh, yeah, so I think we're okay here. I think we're going to be okay. I could just find a way to mount this and isolate it, uh, and this is going to be a kick-ass radio. And How much are you going to use this? I mean, this is going to be a, a, a Sunday driver, right, when it's fully restored, so... Wow, you know, look at this. This old, original 1948 radio works and plays. You know, that... Because most guys that do car radios, they buy those old-looking new ones that are junk, you know, with the Bluetooth and stuff that look old and chrome-flavored. But this is all original, and once he restores the chassis and stuff, this is going to be amazing. Trying to see if I could find LA Aldi's, but it really needs to be put back together. Yeah, but solid state vibrator that works. And what this cost to build? 25 bucks. The fats are five bucks a piece. Depending on, you know, the IC, say the IC is two dollars, the socket's a dollar, all the resistors and caps, the circuit board. 25 bucks to build. And you did it yourself. You know what, I put, since I had two of them, I have now three of them in parallel, trying to get the heat down, because those things just are getting real hot, and it really doesn't bring the voltage up more than a volt or two, but it just helps spread the heat out. I was thinking about this, working on actually editing another video, I was thinking instead of having these diodes here and all the damn heat, why not move, take the diodes, bypass that, move the diodes to the bottom in this line right here. So I think that's our 6 volt positive line. And get the damn heat out of the can here. And effectively just lower the voltage to the whole thing. I know that that sort of, yeah, but it should be just as effective. And it gets all the heat off of this circuit board. 
right? And these are three or five amp diodes, so why not? If each one drops 600 millivolts, if we just put one or two on the bottom in series, maybe a parallel if they get too hot, that'll get the damn heat off of this board. Um, yeah, it, then we have those 6.1 volt Zener diodes, and we're not feeding at 6 volts, but who cares? I don't know. I have mixed thoughts about this. I'm going to try it, though. Because, you know, experimentation. Now, maybe maybe I should have regulated this off to 4 volts. Uh, with 4.2 4 volt Zener diodes or something. Basically, 2 in series gives you 160 volts. If you do... Well, this would be about 0.6 and this would be about 0.2 because this is a shot key. So if we do the shot key, this gives us 230 volts. Man, it's just hard as hell to get it right on. I guess I'm going to go with, I don't know, it's hard to tell. These are two regular rectifiers in parallel. This is one shot key. And I'll show you why I came up with this in a second. This is positive 6 volts coming from the battery. This is the 6 volts going into the uh, vibrator transformer. And these are pretty warm right here. I mean, I can hold on to them, but they're pretty warm. This is barely warm. And we have 242 volts B plus right now, but let me show you this right here. So this is the drop. This is how much voltage we're losing off the shot key. We're losing uh, 425 millivolts. And off of the two regular diodes, we're losing 861 millivolts. So that's the shot, shot key is a lot lower drop. So between the two, I'm basically, I got what 6.3 volts here minus 1.28 volts okay now the fats are just barely warm to the touch barely warm that got all the heat out of this can all of it 99 percent of the heat now is out of that can off those parts and this is basically with almost just exactly six volts going into the radio now, if you were using a 12-volt system and you were cutting it in half, you'd be at about 7 volts because, well, you charging a car running, a modern car running, is about batteries charging about 14.2 volts cold, and it'll alternator will taper down to about, oh, I don't know, 13.8 warm. So we might want to do the two diodes in there. And, and let me think about this because... Either that, the resistor that you use has to cut cut it down to, we either want to run the radio, design it for 6 volts or 7 volts, depending on how we want to go, right? And if we wanted to do 7 volts, we would basically want to do, get rid of the shot key and do, uh, you know, 1.6 volts total drop across four diodes, Two in parallel in series with two in parallel. That gives us more current because they are getting warm. So let me think about that. But this is definitely a far superior way using the lines in series with the B plus than putting them in the source of the FETs.